Crime is a show where I, Rich Slayton, read a true story about lawbreakers. With his Olympic figure skating partner, Joan Shevsky. Which, that's why I blame you for how poorly the U.S. has done this season. Just because my nipple popped out. You keep on out. falling and letting your nipple out. I let it out. It it's hot. a, it's a, your, your, your uniform, your, your sparkles are part of the presentation. And the fact you didn't take it seriously tells me that you really shouldn't be in the sport anymore. I take all sports seriously. That's why I play hockey, football, and baseball with one stick. You know what you should have danced to? Our music. Oh, play the music. Okay. Crime is the show that starts now. Oh, like right now? Oh yeah, yeah. Do your line. Oh, okay. Each week, Rich reads a real crime story. I don't know a word that rhymes with story. And my homie John always has the hot riff. He really loves it when you send. Don't send anything send them to, to me. Him. Don't Let, you dare. Crime podcast at gmail.com. Yeah, don't you send Label anything. Label it John Chesky. He loves them. Make sure the lighting's really good. Hey, criminals. Good to see you. You know what's going to be even better to see you is when we see you here at the Comedy Store for Crime Live on oh, March 17th. So fucking psyched. I it's said so we're close. so fucking psyched. We're so psyched. We're so psyched. We're so pumped. We're excited. We're March pumped. 17th, Saturday night, St. Patty's Day. That's right. Fuck, here. fuck the rest. Yeah, seriously. No, come come here, get drunk, enjoy the show, have a good time. You said come right away. Sorry, Mom. Sorry, Mom. Uh, tickets are available on the Comedy Store website. You can also uh, use the promo code Purple Shirt for half price <laughs> tickets. I love that. Stuff. Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> so stupid. And Just you can also you email us for a really special promo code. So if you email us at crimepodcastgmail.com, you can get. Get a real special promo code. Like a you unique could, one that you could get tattooed on you. But we, we unfortunately we don't offer any shir- insurance for the show. But if we did, you would go to C3 Your Risk and Insurance <laughs> Services. Wow, we've done this read so many times in various ways. You got nothing. Guys, sometimes C3. bad things happen. Yeah. Like you get tickets to a show and the show gets canceled. What the fuck are you talking about? This we one just advertised never, the free show. This one won't get canceled. But I'm saying, like, you need insurance for all sorts of invent- eventualities. Okay. So contact our friend, contact our friend Joseph Earl. Just call him up. Call him up. With Tell him f- Chefsky sent. Yeah, he yeah. loves me. He'll give you a $25 Amazon gift card. Only uh, if you say Chefsky sent you, you'll get If you the gift get card. a policy, yep. you got to mention the show. Uh, C3insurance.com. Go get coverage. And our now newest our newest sponsor, we love A, a Piece, piece that, that Remains. remains. Guys, uh, here's what happens. Every once in a while, a, a person or animal dies, and then you burn their body to get rid of the evidence. Now, what else can you do with that evidence besides keep it in a stupid bottle on your on your mantelpiece? Dumb. You can put it into a, a necklace or a painting with the cremation art and necklaces by D. Kettleson. <laughs> it's a piece that remains. <laughs> she creates many pieces of art that incorporate, <laughs> that incorporate <laughs> the ashes of your dead loved one or, or pet. Um, the art's actually really cool. We're gonna link. So we're gonna put some of that up on our uh, Instagram pretty soon. So check it out. So you can go to a piece that remains.com, which will send you to her Facebook page. She gives ten percent off to listeners that mention crime. Uh, it's the best way to hide human remains in plain sight. Guys, uh, just before, before we go on to the show, stick around to the end. We're going to have a little taste of our Patreon. Oh, yeah, uh, Some bonus, bonus episodes. episodes. So if you, wanna, you can support us in a number of ways. That's one of them. So stick around for a taste of the bonus episode. Taste this bonus. But before we taste that put bonus, bonus bro, your ear. put your virtual hands together for our guest today, Irina Skaya. She's clapping for herself, yeah. listeners. Someone Night. has to. Strong clap. I appreciate it. You can see Irina this weekend at the Improv in Irvine opening week. for Brent Ernst. Week. This week. Yeah, it's, it's Thursday or Friday. I this know. Thursday, Friday, and mm-hmm. Saturday? Sure. That's so, considered a weekend at a yeah, comedy yeah. club. I don't know about Saturday. If I do well, maybe okay. they'll have me back. Going. It's always an audition for me. There's a big filtration system with Brent. <laughs> Brett's very serious. you got to make it through the filter. Yeah. So if you're in the Orange County, Irvine, Inland Empire area, go to the Irvine Improv. Check her out. Yeah, and tomorrow I'm doing We, uh, on Tuesday I'm doing We the People at the Improv. Yesterday for you in Listenerville. Mm-hmm. I did so well yesterday. I killed at We the People. I was the funniest person there. Yeah, CAA it was, signed me. It was a fantastic show that happened tomorrow and yesterday. If there's nothing else about <laughs> Irina, she is so confident. So confident. You can I get have. through the hardest situations with that confidence. I agree. Emergency? I agree. It's, it's called immigrant confidence. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> you a lot talk like, like an immigrant. I have to justify my parents' immigration and mine, so I'm always aggressively confident. Yeah, you're going to start yeah. a successful business real soon. Are you as confident as Charles Robert Smith the oh, third. Was he oh. named after the guy from The Cure? I have no idea. <laughs> you know Robert Smith from The Cure? That's not Robert Smith. Isn't it? It's Robert... Uh, no, it's not Robert Smith. Robert no, Paulson. It's Robert Paulson. From yeah. The Cure? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's that from one. The Cure, not, the Cure. From, uh, well, who's Robert not Smith? from the soap movie. 
I think you're thinking of the um, the murderer from a few months ago. Charles Robert Smith the third was born on March 21st, 1975. Oh, this is probably the murder from a few months ago. Accomack <laughs> County, Accomack County, Virginia. Accomack. His What's that father. Bad? Akamak. Akamak, bruh. I want to start saying that. Return of Akamak. All right. His father left when he was a baby. Afamac His mother, in the middle. Brenda. F a macaroni and cheese. Quickly remarried to a mechanic. F a MacBook Pro. George. <laughs> who took such good care of his stepkids that people assumed he was their biological father. Uh, I thought you were going to say that people assumed he was molesting them. Yeah, I mean... Do people take such good care of kids that you think they're molesting yeah, them? When, yeah. Man, look at how much he loves and supports look, his children. <laughs> look that at how guy nice must be a pedophile. <laughs> Jesus. We got to be meaner to our kids just so we don't get a witch hunt going Man, on Man, that here. guy shows up to all of his kids' baseball games. Yeah. We got to investigate. Yeah. yeah, well, also... He's helping his son with his homework, sir. I think he's going <laughs> to fuck him. <laughs> Charlie wasn't good at much. Of course. That's how it always starts with murderers, just FYI. Well, did I even say this was a murderer? Oh, Whoa, no, is this but guy you're, a, I don't, you don't you're even right, know you're what right. he is. I don't know what he is, but I, can I, yeah. <laughs> did I, Irina just implicate herself in whatever crime? Oh, no. you're, you're all, da, da, I didn't da, da, da. say that yet. I didn't say he was definitely a murderer that I knew. Uh, and keep reading. Uh, keep reading. He was quiet, overweight, and a little slow. The slightest discomfort would send him into uncontrollable, high-pitched giggles. It didn't help... <laughs> It probably didn't help that uh. he was perpetually stoned from the age of 13 onward. Okay, so so far you've described a lot of comics. He just yes. sounds like this is yeah. like the intro for a comedian, basically. Yeah, he doesn't talk a lot. He's fat and he laughs a lot. Yeah. Oh, uh, no, this is so Charlie Murphy's up? original name. That's not his... <laughs> He's an alt comic and a murderer. <laughs> his first <laughs> attempt at ninth grade quickly went up in smoke. The second time he was kicked out, he tried one last time, spending only about 30 minutes in school before officially dropping out for good. By the way, how, that's, so, that's so much uh, information, detailed. 30 minutes? Yeah. Who, was he writing his autobiography like as this was happening? I Slayton mean, is a fucking journalist with integrity, and he finds out to the minute what's going on. I in go this to world. sources. I feel like your dad was there, Slayton, and that's how you got all this information. Yeah. Man, will you stop blowing up my family's spot? Yeah, I'm sorry. From the age of eight, Charlie spent his summers helping George in the shop. By the time he was a teenager, he had a reputation as a wizard with bodywork, <laughs> capable of turning junk heaps into like new cars. He wasn't a wizard with the women, though, I can tell you that. Yeah, actually, very importantly, he was not. Good, yeah. good whoa, call. whoa, yeah. you guys, I, for a second I thought Slade was going to say actually he was, and then you said actually. I was in a, you guys are always tricking me. I'm no dipping and diving and dunking, dude. <laughs> so he wasn't good with the I ladies? I just have to rope it up no. our guests until this, they, uh, they are too tired to fight back, you know? This fat Sounds school like dropout my, that doesn't my talk was You got an ex-husband? Yeah. Is this the guy? Maybe keep reading. Where the already? Or, no, I even, have my, I even have my thumb. I even have my thumb so next proud to of you. it. Can I kiss you on this show? On this George episode? also volunteered at the local fire department. So at 12 years old, Charlie joined the crew as a junior member. With the small department needing all hands on deck, even the junior members were called into action when there was a fire. Oh, even the Jewish excited. members? No, the junior oh, members. Oh, okay. Even the, we even let the Jews fight <laughs> we fires. Even let the Jews I know they're in. too weak to hold up a hose. <laughs> did you, did you but, think you said Jew members? Even the Jew members were called. Okay, but, but I'm not climbing up the ladder. This but, is the one club they let us join. It hurts. It hurts my knees, my back. My I think hands. we do know who was good at holding a hose, though. <laughs> oh, you have no idea. I'm out of that. When risk. the big siren in the town center went off because they didn't have pagers, Charlie and their other junior volunteers would leave school to help. Every time it blared, he felt like a celebrity. Mm -hmm. So no, hero. no pussy. He's getting no pussy, right? Just to be clear. I mean, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, absolutely zero. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's not a, the, the, econ the pussy economy in this small town of 300 isn't really <laughs> booming at the moment. Right. And he's certainly not like adding to the commerce. Although, so had he started later, wo women would have wanted to be with him because women like firefighters. That's so. a very good point. Things were going fairly well. Is that why they have the calendars? Yes. Hmm. Until Charlie made the switch from marijuana to, to crack, crack cocaine. Are you serious? I knew it. I knew it. I, knew it. Oh, I, knew it. I was so excited. I almost read Slayton's body language. Like, he's going to say crack. When he had a falling out with his stepdad, Charlie's uncle gave him a place to stay. He repaid the favor by stealing stuff to pay for more crack. <laughs> Oh boy! He said, At "Crack smoking firefighter." I didn't even know they had those. Can we well, also volunteer firefighter? Whoa, that's even more noble. I mean, he's volunteering. I also love that he's a cliche marijuana, the gateway drug to crack. That's kind a of a jump. hack. Kind of a hack move. Who yeah. doesn't stop at psychedelics on the way? Thank you. <laughs> 
Well, if you stop at psychedelics, you're not going to go to crack. That's a very most you know likely. what? You stay with psychedelics. You right? are special. You you just get tie dye, and you're like, I don't need to steal anything. I can just live with people that share their shit. Dude, I'm just going to start foraging. <laughs> right? I feel like that's the best way to be a part of this world. Let's just all love each other. At first, his that's uncle so, looked the other way, ignoring his good. missing coin collection, ten speed bicycle, and gun. Wait, but, the guy that's having stuff, he's getting his rent paid to him from his... His uncle let him stay with him. He starts robbing his uncle for crack, and his uncle's like, eh, I'll look the other way when he's stealing my stuff to sell. What? Oh, what a nice uncle. But well, when Charlie... it's because he was molesting him. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we yeah, learned yeah. that at the beginning if of the episode. Nice. Everyone about... who's nice is molesting This yeah. uncle's like, I'm yeah. going to get my dick sucked. You can have yeah, my Schwinn can. if you want. <laughs> But when Charlie began writing bad checks in his uncle's name, that That's was the last straw. That's where he draws the line. You don't ruin my good name around this in town. In his first official brush with the law, One Charlie more blowjob, pled- then you're out. <laughs> Charlie pled guilty to 24 counts of forgery. Whoa. He barely served any of his three-year sentence. Why? Good behavior? Well, yeah, he's a white probably. man. I'm pretty sure we also... Yeah, there yeah, we go. He's a white man. <laughs> That's why. Jeez, they really do have racism, don't they? Systemic. Mm. Mm. What? It's horrible. Never the next thought. few years were a roller coaster of getting clean and relapsing. On more than one occasion, he met with his parole officer and admitted he was high so he could save everyone the trouble of a drug test. I do respect the honesty. Can we just say that? I do yeah. respect him That's being a, a... Yeah, I would probably let him off the hook, too. You're like, uh, you know what? Just don't come back high next time. Yeah. Uh, You're gonna, but don't. Uh, ma'am, are you drunk driving? Actually, I'm r- really fucked up right now. Okay, well, I appreciate the honesty. You know Have what? a good night. Because you were honest, yeah. move it along. Have a good this night. This is a warning. Amidst all of this... He fathered a baby girl with an old friend. Oh, I guess he is getting some loving, huh? An old friend, you hear that? She's probably a cougar. She propo- or he proposed marriage. She declined. Nothing wrong with oh, a little okay. experienced lady loving, you know, cougar. So what happened was she needed a, a kid. She needed sperm, and she used him mm. and didn't want to get with him. I, that story happens all the time. Isn't that your situation, John? I think that's how they all work out. <laughs> Everyone's just like, just let me get uh, that guy's come over there, and if that doesn't work out, I'll take that guy's come. I'll take just, a number four and a number five, please. And men are just wandering around like, you need us. We make your lives better. We protect you. And women just go like, I'll take his come. He looks like he's got good come. His back's straight. <laughs> um, excuse me. Can I have your come, please? His um, shoes I only are clean get my come at the farmer's market because <laughs> I like to go neck. from dick to table. That's <laughs> how I go. Oh, folks. Say you heard it here first. Dick, Dick to, to table. table. Go on with your story. He offered marriage. She declined. Still following George's example. She declined? She declined. Yeah. I just told you she That's wanted to come. That's what just fucking happened. Yeah. Were you just, did you, you were so deep in the rift that yeah, you lost you the universe, even, bro. Right. I just, following George's example, just, he remained involved in his daughter's life, which became difficult in 1998 when he went back inside for a B&E where he stole an air compressor, a cordless drill, a propane torch, and a battery charger. No, back oh. inside, you mean her vagina, right? That's where he got no, all No, back inside things? prison. Oh, oh, okay. oh, her vagina. Well, here's There's a, a here's huge 600 square foot pussy <laughs> right over here. Here's what you, you don't really understand about Virginia is that um, they don't use vaginas for tools. It's mostly like a quarry. That's where they keep extra rocks. Oh, that makes sense. Thank what you so much. What a heavy for... ass beaver. <laughs> <laughs> On his second release from prison, Charlie took a job at a chicken factory. That's such a white tweaker thing to steal an air compressor. An air compressor, Any, a cordless yeah, drill, like a propane torch, and a, white a battery dude. charger. Like a black guy's not going to worry about that, a Mexican guy, but a, a white dude will be like, I'm getting that fucking Also, compressor. what do you do with a cordless drill? Who can you resell well, it that's, to? Have you ever that, used a cordless drill? No. They're amazing. You Look never want to go back. Beautiful. I prefer a corded drill, so you don't need to have <laughs> a battery charger. I'm looking at you, and I can imagine you with a drill in your hand. Ouch. Okay. <laughs> You're beautiful. A beautiful woman with a drill. With a drill in her hand. Dude, dude, the future's female. I need you to help me fix my house up. Yeah, he told when he got arrested, he told the officers, he's like, well, the battery charger was for the cordless drill. I had to take them both together. Well, that makes sense. Again, he's, again, the honesty is just breathtaking. He's just such a logical, honest yeah. criminal. Breathtaking is such a beautiful word to use in that context. Oh, thank you. <gasps> On his second release from prison, Charlie took a job at a chicken factory. He started stealing chickens, didn't he? There he met yeah, a woman. I'm in a trunk. Everyone's ah. like, do you uh, have anything you want to declare before, ah. you, before, you drive ah. off the, uh, before you drive off the ah. lot and go home for the weekend? What's, ah. what's that sound? Ah. Uh, it's, uh, that's a uh, that's 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 not that's nothing. <laughs> Sounds um, like a chicken in there. <laughs> no, it's just I got new sneakers and they 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 kind of make a squeak sound <laughs> when I walk. See, mind if I uh, have you pop the hood and uh, <laughs> have a look around? Oh man, um, <laughs> you're not gonna catch me, coppers. My name's Charlie Smith. I admit lots of things because I'm honest, but you will not catch me at one one three four Wilshire Drive. <laughs> 
you. He'll be back on Monday. I'm the security guard at the chicken place that he works at, so it's kind of odd that he did that. At the chicken factory, he met a woman named Mary. It sounds like a great bar, too, right? The chicken, <laughs> the chicken factory. factory. Sounds like a strip club, if you ask me. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like for all those chicks? Yeah, Ooh, chicken exactly. Factory. I'd like to go to the write chicken factory. Write that down. I like sounds that. like a brothel, too, the write chicken that factory. Down. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like the, the Stop uh, ordering me to write stuff, Irina. <laughs> right. You're hey, beautiful, but you're not that beautiful. I'm not going to start writing shit for you. <laughs> hey, taking notes for Fellas of the chicken factory, get your feed and <laughs> corn ready. Coming uh, out now is dude, Bok Bok. Dude, if you, if, if you, if, 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 if out of the two of you guys, if you could have sex with like your ultimate super, like whoever your su- sexual fantasy Vin is. Vin Diesel. But they have, but for feet, they have animal Vin feet. Vin Diesel. They have animal feet. Vin Diesel, mm-hmm. what kind of feet would you have? Feet. Chicken feet. I thought we just You'd have sex with Vin Diesel with chicken feet? I would have sex with him if he had pig feet. Mm, okay, you don't get to pick pig pigs feet. Are very close to humans. I could fry it up when I'm done. Strong move. That's a really strong move. What about you, Because you're hungry at the end. Oh yeah. It's like, how would you hook up with Bradley Cooper? Would he? Could he have? I don't know. I know. On a, here's a weird one. Going to throw you for a loop. Not animal legs. Table legs. That's what I'm really into. Oh, I would hold on to those table legs. Yeah, yeah. I... Like a pirate. Like, but both legs. Mm. Yes, both legs. But they're like, but like an ornate table with good carving and stuff like that. Mm. I'm so I, scared. That's, by that's what the only you thing that would me. that would really match his chiseled features. Oh, oh chiseled, chiseled, chiseled face. See, what, what about oh, you, Chevsky? What huh? what animal slash furniture would you have sex with? There was uh, what's, what's and the her answer name? is your wife, Gre- Greta Gerwig, with a goat leg. Wrong I would still do. <laughs> Which my wife is kind of like my own Greta Gerwig. She but is, she doesn't have a goat. She's leg. a bit of a Greta. The moment Mary saw Charlie, she told her friend, "Oh my God, I'll end up with him." Before long, Mary and her two children joined Charlie. Wait, wait, wait! Mary and her two children. He already has one. I feel a Brady Bunch moment coming on. Here's the story of a weird guy that's fat and quiet that uh, commits dun, a bunch of petty dun, crimes dun, and has dun, one dun, kid. Dun, dun, and dun, then dun, he dun, found out that crack dun, is super dun, awesome dun, and dun, he couldn't dun, stop. Dun, 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 so one day he stole a compressor dun, 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 and he sold it. Dun, dun, then he smoked up the profits right away. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. And now he works in a chicken factory <laughs> where he jacks chickens every day. <laughs> Oh, that's what a chicken sounds like. There we go. <laughs> Mary and her two children joined Charlie in the house his parents rented for him. For a while, things looked to be on the right track. He attended regular the AA. The alt-right cha- track? That's where you go. I want an alt-right track suit. He attended regular AA and NA meetings. Mary received a settlement from a job injury, and they used the extra money so <laughs> she could enroll in EMT classes. <laughs> Wait, can I just talk about how much has happened in that six months they've been together? Jesus. Oh, it goes fast. Wow. So strap in, folks. Are, did, did you guys put your seatbelts on? Because this is a blazer. Oh. A Chevy blazer? Yes. Or a blazer that you wear to it's a It's a blazer that you party. wear, like a lesbian blazer. Or Which, a fire. Yeah, I have a nice maroon one. Mm. It looks, it looks, I went on a date once and I wore it and the girl made fun of me and I've not worn it since. That's why. That you still have it That though? was 12 years ago. You're married. Why would you still have it? Because F- who knows why I don't need it to look bad, To, to remind himself that he had a date one time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's like, I dated it around before I settled <laughs> yeah. down. I had people interested. Despite his criminal record, the fire department gave Charlie a second chance, letting him join his stepdad and half-brother as volunteers. Oh, thanks so much. I can be a volunteer again. Hey, anyone going to help me pay my car payment on these volunteers? So one thing about the fire department in this small town is it's sort of like the center. Of, it's for years have been the center of the social circle. Yeah. It's so a tiny why town. would they let a guy who's been to jail twice, why would they let him back in? Because they all know him. They're, like, it's a small town where he's he just made some mistakes, and he's back on his feet, and they wanted to be part, part of the community. Can so I also people. just tell you, the more you're describing his um, dirty backstory, the more I'm like really into him. I get that. Yeah. I, I know your man. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> Oh, are you talking about my ex, the sniper? Oh, yeah, I know about the sniper. Yeah, I used to be married to a sniper. I don't know okay, how, that's awesome. Yeah. I, I, I don't know how anyone would date you after that. That's like the, the scariest kind of like... Uh, yeah, oh, he was an arms dealer slash sniper. Yeah, I would just be like, every time I see a laser pointer, I'd be like, oh, fuck. Yeah, yeah the FBI lived across from our house. I would just wake up in the morning and be like, hey, Frank. He's, he's like, like hey. we only... He's like, um, babe, can we only go to restaurants that have underground parking garages, please? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. What was the breakup like? All right, go on with the story. All his experience with cars made him especially useful when they needed to extract someone from a vehicle. Charlie loved being part of the fire team. It wasn't a volunteer job. It was family. They got together for barbecues and kids' birthdays. Every time his pager went off, Charlie excitedly rushed out the door, happy to be needed and put his so life th- on the line. This is his community. This is this beyond. Is, yeah. so, so it doesn't matter that it's a volunteer. What you're saying is this, these are the people that is his he's community. He's a hero. He's this a is hero. where he's part of something. He's he, a hero. He has purpose. I need a hero. Well, right. you got a hero in this story. 
He loved to feel needed. If a friend had a problem with someone else, he would always offer to beat them up. Wow. Well, that's his go-to. Yeah. Hey, listen, I'm having trouble with my accountant. Do you have one I can use or I don't know what to do? I will kick the shit out of your accountant for you. Oh, no, it's just I, he's just not working fast. And I, Which one is he? No, no. Show I, me a please, picture. No, please don't, don't beat him up I again. I will beat up your accountant. Uh, okay. All right. Thanks. I'll set nothing. him on fire. Hey, Charlie, uh, I don't know if... These arms are fire. No, I get it, man. I mean, really nice. The, the arms are looking great. Yeah, thanks. But, you won't be beaten up for that comment. Thank you. Do you do you know like a good OBGYN? My wife's pregnant, and we're not really super into the current ones. Her bedside manner is not like not perfect. You I know? can do it for you. I'm uh, consider me a friend. You I can will do it. deliver the baby. I w- yes, that sounds like a really great choice. Um, I'll beat the shit out of you if you don't think I can do it. I kind of feel like I have to let you deliver my baby now. I'm kind of getting mad just standing here continuing the conversation. Well, I'm I'm going to go on with the story. Then. Is the baby ready to be delivered or not? Are you going to punch the baby out? Charlie Smith was an imp- unfortunate mix. One half hero and the other one half, half Jew. a total moron. Oh, sorry. One half Jew. <laughs> Which means the fire, boys. Of course. You want me to put the water on the fire? I don't. That sounds crazy, Wait, man. so I can't bring chickens to the incidents? Hey, young, dumb hero, it's over there. (laughs) For the better part of a decade, he lived a fairly normal life. He worked, did his volunteer duties, and took care of his family. Sounds like a great guy, actually. Where is he working again? At the chicken coop. Uh, No, during the daytime, he's a mechanic. Oh, mechanic. Okay. Uh, He might still be, I think he's at the chicken factory slash mechanic. This is a town where everyone has, like, four jobs. Yeah, right, right, right. It's real tough. Like, they don't now, right? Yeah. It's a dust bowl. But eventually, things started to unravel. First, he and Mary called it quits Aww. after years of being engaged but unable to tie the knot. They were so good together. Yeah, I liked them together. Then his favorite uncle died. Oh, the one that molested him. The one that you said molested him. Oh, okay. the one that allegedly, one lived according with, to our away? premise, yes, the, yeah. the, the, the living one. That's never the one made. who let him do a lot of shady things. So maybe it was the uncle's fault. Probably, I blame the uncle for. He didn't teach him discipline. Mm-hmm. Then his mother came down ill. Charlie started using drugs again. Crack. Probably. Okay. He thought about suicide. <laughs> Things are going downhill fast. Oh, jeez. Right on my laughter, he said that. Yeah, I was bad. trying to time it for when you laughed because I wanted to really make you look well, like a bad person. Uh, hey, boss, listen, I'm going to need the uh, garage this weekend. Don't ask why, but um, can you just make sure no one comes in? Can you also leave all the cars in the garage, like every single one of them? Just yeah. one question? Yep. Why? Oh, I have to work on some car stuff, and it's not about suicide. Well, you seem like you're in pretty, uh, pretty calm shape. Go for it. Thanks, boss. Where's the hose? Then one night in 2011, Charlie made his way to Shuckers. <laughs> a strip club. <laughs> Please strip tell me club. it's a strip club. <laughs> the local watering hole that accounted for all the nightlife in town. Oh, yeah. So it basically is a strip club. That means, that means it's a bar, but shit gets cray in different areas of the bar. Hey, guys, listen. I'm thinking about opening a bar. I was going to call it Fun Times. Any other suggestions? How about Fuckers? Uh, I like where your head's at, but maybe something a little more How upbeat. about Lots of Drunk? Mm, something with fuckers in it, but also something about... Smuckers, because it's like a grape thing. Oh, I like that. I like... Sm- oh, wait. They already have grape jelly. Oh, is that a problem? Yeah. Is there going to be damn. a bunch of beavers there? A bunch of women showing their oysters? Yeah, and corn. Lots of corn. So if you're showing your oysters, maybe mm. you could shuck some of them oysters. Maybe you could call it shuckers. Boys, I think we got a deal. Sold. Mother shucker. We did it. In Charlie's pocket that night was two eight balls of cocaine. Wait, he, what? He's going to Shuckers with Wait, a bunch of coke? cocaine's not eight balls. Yeah, it is. Is it? Yeah, eight yes. ball of blow. Specifically. I thought it was always eight balls of, like, heroin. Obviously, you've never hung out with successful business friends. <laughs> they have bowls. They usually have coke. They're not they have night. bowls of coke. The night could have bowls ended. Bowls of coke. Jeez, hanging out with your arms dealers. I, I'm about piles, personally. <laughs> but do what you do. I like a little snapper of herb. Just a <sighs> That night could Take have ended in off. any number of tragic ways. But then he met a girl. Can please tell me her name is like Bertha. It's a small town. Tanya. Tanya. Susan Shucker. Bundick. Bundick? <laughs> yes. Oh, man. You What's up, Bundick? You want to have some fun with my dick, Bundick? <laughs> oh, she probably got slaughtered in school. That well, gave her character, and she's probably an achieving uh, person now, right? Was born September 7th, 1971 to an old school Virginia family. Yeah, see, she's her, fine. Her ancestor, Richard good. Bundick, arrived as a colonist in 1647. 
Oh, wow. And made enough money from land and tobacco to set up his descendants for centuries. Oh, and also wow. the death of Indians. Of course. I right. mean, what else would Native you do? Native American. Uh, my apologies. Yeah. Redskins. No, no, no. He went to India and killed a lot of them first oh. as practice. Please, you're looking there were for so the many. wrong people, not me. But somehow, but somehow, little of his fortune trickled down to Tanya's family. Uh. Um. Her father, a farmer known for his quick temper, mostly worked other people's land. As a kid, she was a shy outcast with oversized glasses. I'm pretty sure I just told you that. Just kind of nailed that shit, Yeah, bro? I knew it. I knew it. It's because of her last name, and also, she's fat. But she was smart and motivated, joining a teen program that allowed her to graduate high school as a certified nursing assistant. Oh, wow. Mm. By certified the 2000s. nursing assistant. Mm. Jeez, reach for the stars, wow. right? Huh. Certified. And the assistant. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. By the 2000s, she was known as a hard worker, doing everything she could as a single mom with two boys. Wait, she has two kids? What? Who's the husband? Where did this happen? Not important to the it's story. It's a different oh. part of her life. Okay. Irina, we can't tell you everything. One I'm day, sorry. Bundick took a dump, and it thundered and lightninged outside. We don't know what day it was. Can I just guess that she thought she was having a stomach ache and then accidentally pooped out the kids like that I story? I personally know someone who that happened to. Yeah, there you go. That, you know you don't. I do. That doesn't happen. I saw the news story. We saw, like, someone texted us the news story and they're like, holy shit, did you see this? And we're like, yeah, because we know them. That's crazy. It happens a lot. Is it a psychological thing though? Because a pregnancy is such an intense thing for a woman. There, I can't it's imagine a, it being a thing that you could go through seven to nine months of being like, It's a too many sandwiches thing. I just thought I had thing. some farts. Clayton, was it you? Is that how you were born? Yeah, right. <laughs> Clayton. <laughs> Richard Clayton. By the 2000s. Oh, yeah, she did that. When her mother died in 2006, she moved back home to take advantage of an already paid off living quarters. Uh, to blow off steam, she became a regular at Shuckers. Oh, she's a stand up comedian? She's a dancer at Shuckers? She's a bar fly. Mm, a People chuckle fucker. <laughs> A shuckle fucker. A shuckle, a shuckle I can't fucker. I missed it that. was right there. That's why it takes a team. Sorry. It takes three of us to get a riff sometimes. It takes a village to raise shuckle a riff. Shuckle fucker. People God were shocked it. at her return, mostly because the mousy girl they picked on had turned into a total fox. With big fat tits. I fucking told you she'd be all right. She's hot. She's out drinking. She's having a good time. She's smart. She's got character because people made fun of her name. And has it big forced her fat to develop. tits. So you're, I mean, aren't you happy now? Hey, about Tawny, her, show know, us them tits. I don't know about her. Tawny. <laughs> <laughs> What's her name? Tanya. But Tawny probably, she probably got called That's that here and there. probably her name. She was so hot that many of her closest childhood friends didn't even recognize her when they first saw her. God damn, the listeners are going to have to ask for a link. Yeah. Of they course. Even pictures. the women want to well, no, know hold now. Hold on. I'm, I, have to, I have to get this in context. She was so small town of 300 people right. in Virginia hot. Yeah, Virginia hot. She's so she, in California, she's a three. Yeah. She's no, a sometimes Virginia those eight. Virginia hot are hotter than California We'll, do, we'll do some photos later. That's a Beach Boys song. I wish of they all could be Virginia those girls. Looks took work. She was known to hit multiple tanning salons in the same day to Wait. circumvent the rules about time limits. Oh, she's all fake tanned. That's kind of I don't gross. know why people think that's what makes someone hot, like tan mom. Oh, she's tan mom. You know, look like you're being prepped for surgery. Like, just like, just like, why are you so iodine y? I can tell by your eyebrow color. That's not your skin color. You're... The girl who'd been picked on as a nerd became the most popular woman at Shuckers. Much like Charlie, she was a woman of two parts half hardworking mom and half party girl. Yeah, Charlie's got a boner. She got the beaver. Let's get together. Skate, skate, skate. That night at Shuckers saw the beginning of an improbable romance. <laughs> On one side, you had the hot mom who was so popular that her the fashion milk. choices the influenced the entire town. Everyone's like, I'm going to get a jean jacket. <laughs> jean jacket? No, she wore like sequins and tube tops. She dressed. <laughs> hey, is that a potato sack? Oh yeah. my God, look at Tanya. What year is this? I love the way it's cut. Like, it's year? so formal. What year is this? This is 2011. I yeah, think. what do fucking people wear in 2011 in Virginia? He, like he said, sequins. Yeah, she's wearing uh, she's wearing th like 19 late 90s fashion. Yeah, because yeah. they're behind. Yeah, they haven't they, ha they haven't even gotten telephones. She has yet. aviator sunglasses and like a, a, a like a Hitler haircut and like yeah. uh, long boots with rollerblade uh, wheels long, on the bottom. Did you say long boobs? Boots. Oh, <laughs> long, okay. boobs. long boobs. Long boobs. Same thing every guy wants. Long boobs. Am Dude, I that, right? That, that long what, that's chick. what men like, right? Long boobs. <laughs> That's what I, I go for, man. That's what you guys like, right? Well, however nature created you, it's just just she's a she's a thirty four C Y because you have to have the extra axis in there. I'll man. show you why. If you, give me a couple minutes. <laughs> okay. On the other side, you had the jailbird firefighter with poor social you skills. Say file Shut fighter? the figgity fuck up, <laughs> jailbird firefighter. A friend introduced them, you and they spent the evening talking about their lives. 
He opened up about his prison time and struggles with drugs. She about the challenges of raising two boys. I would own. wait till the second date to talk about that. But that no, just might you know be what? Me. I think you chicks like these guys that have been to prison. Okay, you got me. Right? <laughs> all women. I do. I do. I've I do. learned a few things about women in my short time on this planet. I, and hey, I know all um, women like a pre, a post. Every woman mate, is mate. the same. Hey, I'm having a really good time on this date. <laughs> oh, me too. Uh, I'm having such a good time that I feel comfortable telling you that I've been to jail a lot. Did you say jail? Yeah. Um, Follow me to the bathroom right now. I have a, don't you want to hear the rest of what no, I'm doing? No, come with me okay. and then come. Okay. When and she's... then one time I was arrested. Yeah? For, yeah? I, I stole an oh air my compressor. God. Oh, an air compressor? And, and the oh, cop, God. He yeah. asked me where I got it. Oh, I love air compressors. Oh, my God. I was oh. honest with him. I was honest oh, with him. Oh, God. And he, and he said it was... Hey, guys, can I get in? I need to pee no, really bad. No. Get out of All right, fuck it. I'll be back. Like, I'm going to go outside. And then what happened? I'm trying to figure out where I am. I'm trying to figure out where I am. Sorry. (laughs) When Tanya said she couldn't have drugs around her boys, Charlie excused himself, went to the restroom, and flushed the cocaine down the toilet. I thought he was going to take all of it. (laughs) So he's a bipolar psycho. Yeah, I thought he was going to take all of it. No one makes a huge life decision like that when they meet a new opposite sex person. You know what? I'm done with that life, baby. Unless there's sex involved. At first, their relationship was purely physical. Oh, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That's right. And you think he'd want to keep the cocaine for that, right? But it didn't take long for Charlie to admit he was falling in love with her. It didn't take me long to admit. I'm falling in love with you, Tanya. Oh, my God. I love you, too. She reciprocated a few days later by text, sending <laughs> each of the eight letters individually. Wait, you can text on pagers? Well, they have. this is like 2011, 12 Wait. now. Oh, They're okay. starting to turn it around. Can I oh, ask okay. you guys a question? Sure. Is, is it weird to send a uh, text that's uh, each... Uh, Text is a different is a letter. Like it was a, like I L O V E. Oh yeah, no, no. I, I I never have or would ever do that. I feel like she sent emojis, like an eye and then a heart and then uh, like a, a lady finger. ram. Yeah, yeah, I get that. <coughs> when they went out on dates, mostly to shuckers, Tanya, of Tanya, Tanya she, she gets a discount there. Tanya picked out his clothes so they would look good together. Mm-hmm. Soon he moved in with her and the boys. They even merged their Facebook accounts. <laughs> Joined together under the name T-Char, oh, their God. version of Benifer or Tomcat. I'm a, you can, is there a bucket Wait. that we have in here for all of us to throw up into? Wait, T-Char? They couldn't have come up with, I, I don't know, Tocher? I was just barfing because they still use Facebook, and it's yeah. 2011. It's like, get, get with it. What are you on? Huh? What are you on? I'm off social media. Oh, all together. S- except for Instagram, Twitter. And Friendster. And, twi- and Facebook. Yeah, yeah, and Facebook. Too. Tanya posted more often peppering their page with rhymes and inspirational messages called Tanyaisms. Hey, um, I'm going to need to ask you something. I posted a picture of us, and you didn't like it. I was busy, honey. I was uh, flushing crack down the toilet. Well, listen, if you want this relationship to work, I'm going to need you to like our photos. You got it, but I'm, I mean, I'm in them. How would I like our own photos? It feels kind of weird. I don't care if you like them in real life. I need you to like them in virtual life. Okay. Charlie would reply from the same account, Indicated by starting his posts with, it's Char. Uh, I want Charlie in charge of his stepkids uh, and my Facebook. It's like a terrible reality show. So here's an example of her poetry that she would post up on her Facebook page. Do you mind if we just no, you're, turn the lights down? This is great. Smoke a dude. <clears throat> it's raining. It's pouring. Uh, that old lady been out whoring. She dribbling done her chin. Wonder where that mouth been. She skirt is torn. She looking real war. He tapped that ass. She probably got gas. <laughs> this is a white lady this in Virginia? Is, no. White lady in Virginia, yes. Oh my God. Poor old soul, been freaked in the hole. You can't sit down. She look like a clown. Is she hot well, or it what? It sounds like a modern day, I don't know, Shakespeare, I would say. A friend commented, you are very talented. It's a Shakespeare. <laughs> it's a Shakespeare. She's known as the Shakespeare. She works at Shakespeare. One of her friends commented on that specific poem, you are very talented with words. It's definitely a guy that's trying uh, to fuck he's her trying to after fuck her. they break up. Uh, You're very pretty. You are very, very talented with words. Also, Charlie's cheating on you. <laughs> a few months into their relationship, Charlie opened his own auto shop. But his new location had more room than he needed, so Tanya opened up her own business in the office. Can I, but, uh, you nail guess? salon. Nope. Tanning, tanning bed. Uh, what do you guess for the business? Does, does, it, uh, does that have to do with prostitution? Not in the least. No. I was like, you said she's whoring, so I was hoping maybe she's A boutique start. offering affordable clothes the woman could wear to shuckers. 
Uh, oh my god, that sounds like the dumbest and the like. She has shuckers as her like that. That's her brand already. But you mm-hmm. can't wear it anywhere else. Only to shuckers. But There's nowhere else nice it, to go. If you're if it's you're impossible. in a small town and you like that's the hit spot in the town. I don't even know what you would call it. The hot spot in the town. Right. The, and she's got that spot. market cornered. And if she goes, hey. I got the right outfits for you guys to come to Shuckers. It's like that Mexican village where they have those those cowboy boots that are really long and pointing. They're like four feet up in the air. Have you seen those before? Yeah. They're, you never wear. You don't wear those to. to oh my god! Know. Thank you so much for helping me buy this dress. This is so beautiful, Tanya. I can't wait to wear it to church. No, 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 no. Tanya says don't wear that to church. Is that how a Virginia lady talks? That's how a. A lady who makes biscuits talks. That's good. That's good. <laughs> I've been making biscuits with my husband. I would you love it if they wore these clothes to church because uh, I'm going to describe the clothes oh, to you in just a yes, moment. Yes. The store called A Tiny Taste of Toot. What's Because that? Toot was her nickname her dad called her. Of course. But, oh, I thought but it was ev- like, but you everyone smell thought, a little whiff of my fart. Well, no, yeah. everyone thought that it was like, a lot of people thought that it was a cocaine reference. Oh. Oh, yeah. Toot. Yeah. Tootin' for your she nose. She sold items like... <clears throat> White platform pleather boots. Of course. Sexy. Gold studded backpacks. I approve. And tank tops with the Play Bunny logo. And clear Play heels. Yeah. Clear heels, I'm sure. Without question. Yeah. It's like a really bad Etsy store. Yeah. <laughs> they owned a home with their cars and their business. They were living the Accomack County dream. Sounds like it. All these gold backpacks, you know what I'm saying? But there were some small wrinkles. Tanya never talked about her past. Mm. She freaked out if the house wasn't spotless. <laughs> and he never saw her without finished hair and makeup oh that's always a trick that these ladies do to us the still hair and makeup trick who's under that fucking thing huh robin williams he was happy actually i was just walking in and my boyfriend didn't recognize me Crazy. are you serious mm-hmm. yeah he's never seen me without makeup that's so nuts yeah. you yeah are talking about this with your current boyfriend that i know yeah he just passed me in the street and did not recognize me that's not true that's no, he was just trying to play it cool because that's his game. That's not true. It's yeah. still working. Always, I love we, how he's playing hard to get. I am so <laughs> in it. We always talk about that. Still, he was happy enough that in late 2011 at a local diner, he pulled out a silver ring from Walmart and asked her to marry him. <laughs> and trying to snort it. <laughs> you tried to <laughs> snort the ring? Yeah. Ow, my nostril. <laughs> the waiter's like, is everything all right? He's like, ah. He looks up, there's no ring sticking out of there, like blood. <laughs> It looked white. I just that's how, get that's how he proposed. He's like, honey, my nose hurts. Can you check on this thing for me? Oh, he did a ah. farmer's rocket for a ring, like da, a diamond. Da, 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 da. He shoots the diamond. Hey, do you think he had witnesses there like the chickens? <laughs> the chick- well, <laughs> they married him? <laughs> she, she said, I do. The, the witnesses thing is great because she said yes, but she asked that they keep the engagement a secret for now. Of course. So she could plan a bigger version of the right. engagement for the and public. Also, and also she, so she could tell her husband that she's leaving him. <laughs> yeah. A little while later, he proposed on her birthday publicly at Shuckers. Ubi. He went along with it? Ubi. Their yellow outfits matched her yellow birthday cake just as she had planned. Ew, yellow? yellow? A man wearing yellow? Gross. Right? I mean, yeah, I mean, not as good as a man wearing purple, tell you that. Much. Oh. <laughs> Tanya started planning the event of the year. The T Char Facebook page <laughs> posted that the official wedding announcement was coming soon. I don't like these people anymore, Slayton. I kind of hope that they just drive off of the Thumb actually, on Louise Cliff. I wanted him to be a killer. That would be way cooler than just being a regular man. <laughs> well, he's probably going to kill her once, you know, once they get married, at least. But they wanted people to RSVP now by email. Since there would be a 300 guests, Whoa. a number that matched the entire population of town. Whoa, everyone has to go? It was a theme wedding based on the Guns N' Roses music video. Yes, yeah! of course it was. For November Rain. Oh, <laughs> That's what I'm thinking of. Of course it was. A very church? odd choice since the video features an unhappy bride who dies at the end. In the cold November rain. How <laughs> apropos. The reception... Would be at Shuckers. Of course, it would be. At I'm Shuckers. really getting sick of the food here at Shuckers. Yeah. <laughs> Every fucking day, it's like I've had everything. Do you on the take menu. the shuckle fucker to be your lawfully <laughs> wedded hey, shuckle woman? Tanya, for your big day, uh-huh. uh, we're thinking for the spread. We're thinking mozzarella sticks, Ooh. Uh, nachos, uh-huh. and then more mozzarella. That's only the two things that we make here. What about actually. the zucchini? Th- those zucchini? are actually just mozzarella sticks. Oh. Can we just tell you it's <laughs> zucchini so you feel healthier? I've never seen a vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> but as the wedding approached, things started to unravel. 
over. Tanya's over. oldest boy, now 13, was acting up, and it put a strain on everything. Yo, you're not my real dad. Yeah. yeah I've gone through puberty, all right? Things are getting crazy. It's like Big Mouth over here. Once he took a swing at Charlie with a skateboard, <laughs> slicing him across the back from shoulder to waste. Wait, a skateboard can do it that? was like a, a it, razor board? He, yeah, a razor board, seriously. He like skated for a while. It was kind of jacked oh, yeah, up yeah, on yeah. the edges. You know. So when you grind on the He wasn't the some edges, like poser oh, bro with like a clean, oh. smooth skateboard dog. Yeah, what do you think? You take a brand new skateboard? This, Another this. time the son jumped from a moving car when they were headed somewhere he didn't feel like going. Fuck can I just tell yeah. you this 13 year old is starting to sound very Pretty hot? hot. Yeah. I think you're turning on everyone in this goddamn story. <laughs> Eventually they pulled him and began homeschooling. Charlie barely saw his own daughter because her mother thought he and Tanya were on drugs. I totally forgot about the daughter. In yeah. May of 2012, his mother died. Oh. Who's did? Charlie's. Sorry. Mother's died. Yeah. She we did. never even talked about her. Well, Brenda. He, we he, mentioned he, her briefly. He, he, he we said it, and he got a little bummed when she was sick. Oh, okay. Money was so tight that Charlie was dumpster diving for food. Ooh. Oh, dude. I told you he's a hipster, dude. He Wait, got... what about Shuckers? Shuckers doesn't well, feed Well, they, they shuck it out, and he goes diving for it. Things got that worse happens. and worse. They still went out, but only to keep up Tony, Tanya's carefully crafted appearances. Oh, this so guy, that's where all the money's going. Okay. This guy's dumpster diving while she's getting her nails done? Yeah. Sometimes they just drove down county roads for hours. County roads. Wait, so people could see him home. driving? No, that was just to get out of the house and blow oh. off steam. Oh, okay. Two on November 12th, 2012, on one of those drives, Tanya told Charlie he could leave if he wanted and she wouldn't hold it against him. I'm in it for the long haul, he replied. <laughs> I'll do whatever it takes to, for you to be happy. That's when she stopped the car and said, Suck my pussy. Get out oh, and that. set that house on fire. Oh, this wait, is a weird s and thing. Wait, thought, their house or just a house outside? Just a house. They pulled over while driving. They're arguing. And he's like, I'll do anything you want, baby. You know that. And she's like, all right. He fucking thought, go over there and set that house on fire. You he know? thought he misheard her. But then she pointed at an old white house long abandoned alone in a field and said, I want you to set that house on fire. Uh, Playing along, he got out and walked to the home. That house is on fire. She drove away. A few minutes later, she called and asked if it was done. He what? jokingly said yes. She drove away? She drove away. You don't just stay there with the guy you order around. Uh, well, look, if you're going to get off by like being a pyromaniac, you should stay and watch the thing go down. She's right? probably playing with herself with like the like a Lebowski style. Like she's driving, right? The convertible, the, the wind's hitting her. And she's like, yeah, yeah, I got that guy to do. He'll do anything for me. And that's what turns her on. That's the S&M thing, right? That's the model. When Dominant, she picked submissive. him up. Set that house on fire. huh? She was happier than he'd seen her in months. Blow up that dam over there. Huh? They you know? drove around for a while, Go laughing steal a and chatting, from Target for me. like they just started dating. Then she wanted to go back and see the fire. That's all it takes to get this woman off? Charlie tried to play it off, but after a few drive-bys, he fessed up to not actually burning it. She sighed, frustrated, and said, never send a man to do a woman's job. At 10.30 that night, someone called 911 to report a fire. Four stations were called in, partially to make sure enough firefighters made it to the scene, and partially to make sure they had enough pressurized water as the rural area lacked a central water system. Jesus, this is an evil arson situation. You pump what you brung, was an old fireman saying. In the brothels and on the streets. <laughs> and before long, it was clear they hadn't brung enough. They swapped in tankers, refilling from local ponds until they finally beat the fire into submission. Wait, but they got to call Charlie. He's a volunteer <clears throat> firefighter. I think at this moment, he's n no longer... Uh, okay. Three hours later... The firefighters were back at their stations repacking their gear when their pagers went off again. 13 miles away, another call came in, this time to report flames rising from 100-year-old shacks on a farm. Ah, antiques. Ugh. Eight minutes later, another call to report a brush fire. Whoa. At 10.30 the following night, another call came in for an abandoned house. Pandora's box. Followed by another at 10.45 and another at 11.43. Jesus. Six fires. Was she coming in between all these fires or during? Or? He was Very dehydrated. Six um, times of coming, huh? Yeah. Clearly, it was arson. So the next day, investigators began searching for clues. Just in case, the local sheriff requested a list of other abandoned structures in the county. Wait, wait, sheriff, sheriff. <clears throat> Is that a sequin t-shirt next to the fire? What? Are those, are those clear heels? Put this in evidence. Someone bag up that gold study. <laughs> and that fanny pack and those uh, Converse high heels. You ever see those? They're disgusting. In 1910, no, you don't. Akamak County was the highest non-urban per capita 
income in the country. It had a population of over 53,000. What does that mean, non-urban? Like, like it's not so the outside city. of the cities, so rural it was the area. highest. Oh, I thought by urban you meant like Mexican black <clears throat> people. No. No, okay. Urban is an non-city. area? Yeah. yeah. Oh, got it. Okay. So. And it had a pop- the, the county had a population of over 53,000. When fortune turned to hardship, the numbers shrunk by over 20,000. A couple days later, the list came back with 800 possible addresses. And that's just the ones where someone still paid taxes. Dang! Uh-huh. They estimated the real number of abandoned buildings in the county was probably in the thousands. Oh, shit. Even with volunteer officers from nearby departments, they only had about eight or ten people to stake out the locations. Jeez, they are undermanned, huh? So they went to Bass Pro Shop, picked up some <laughs> camouflage tents, had some and really space bad heaters, <laughs> and prepared to stake out what they considered the five most likely targets. There's a Bass Pro, Pro Shop in this town. Like, yeah, everyone works here. <laughs> We're actually hiring if you want to move to town. Actually, I, I work at Shuckers, so <laughs> thanks, though. Yeah, but Shuckers, they don't sell boats and shrimp. You know? I said thanks. And they got it dead <laughs> wrong. While none of their targets got hit, structures lit up left and right. On December 8th, the sixth-ranked house on their list went up in flames. In less than a month from the first night of fires, it made this made it 28, just over one per She's day. She's on a rampage. Yeah, dude. This ain't, this ain't her cycle. This to is make day. matters worse, investigators had yet to find a single clue. Well, it can't be a woman, because women have them squirrel brains, so it must be a man. Questioning witnesses was useless. Squirrel. Since the fires happened at night in an area with such low population density, it was rare to see another car on the road after 9 p.m. On December 15th, Lois Gomez woke up in the middle of the night. You mean Luis, Luis. Gomez? Yep. Yeah, Luis. No. Lois. Okay. She so married woman, she married a Mexican. Lois. Oh, Lois, like in Ace yeah. Ventura. There you go. Sorry, Lois. She hadn't been sleeping well. There was, of course, the stress of the arson spree, now at 29 buildings. Damn. <gasps> but she was also having trouble with her new neighbors. The Who previous the buildings on fire. <laughs> had died, leaving the house to her daughter, Tanya Bundick. Oh. Oh, Bundick, which kind of sounds like burnt it. Lois and Charlie did Tanya not get along. Burnt it Most down. of it was little neighbor-type petty squabbles. But once he accused her of using racial slurs towards Tanya's kids, which Lois found ridiculous as her husband was Mexican and her grandchildren were part black. Oh, shit. I knew it. Tanya's white. She has, she has mixed kids. Mi- are the black mixed kids. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's why she's so comfortable speaking in like a black tone. Mm. Right. It's like she's like, oh, I am I, black. That's where she got much. that dope poetry skill that's from. That's where yeah. she got the poetry slam <clears throat> from. As she went to get a glass of water, Lois heard someone banging on her door. Your garage is on fire. I've already called 911. Onlookers gathered to watch firefighters battle the blaze, including Tanya and Charlie. Oh. At one point, Tanya leaned over to another member of the crowd and asked who she thought was responsible. Hey, <laughs> hey, um, hey, Mike? <laughs> yeah. Who do you think started this fire with gasoline and a match? Who do you think it could have been? Oh, how the hell should I know? They're just, they just caught the fire right now. But yeah. who would you guess it could be? Like, who's hot enough to do something like this? Uh, I don't know. I mean, wait a second. Listen, I got to go, but it was nice catching up with you. Before she left, she declared that the arsonist was clearly someone too smart to get caught. Mm-hmm. This she was said that fire number everyone? 30. She yeah. looked around mm-hmm. and said, like, the arsonist definitely has big titties and is very smart. And is fine as fuck. Yeah. Great and is having sense. a sale at her store. <laughs> a fire sale. A fire sale. Make sure to RCP for her wedding. It's going to be huge. <laughs> it's going to be the best wedding ever. Your wedding's A fire sale. Who is the arsonist? Was the oh yeah? As a quick note, Lois also no, um, noticed that there was a chicken coop attached to the garage that was on fire, and whoever set it on fire had let, the chickens had let the chickens out of first. Of course. Oh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm liking her again now. So she didn't fry the Charlie chickens. Charlie did it. Charlie saved oh, the chickens. Oh, Charlie, he's the he's the like kind one. He's like, yeah. honey, can we please let can the chickens please go? Save the say, chickens? No, no, Charlie. <laughs> if you want to make me come, you fucking burn the chickens. He's I've like, already oh, got so much right. chicken blood on my hands from my time at the chicken factory. <laughs> I don't right. think I can handle another dead chicken. <laughs> what do you say, mistress? I'm so sorry, chickens, but she's not going to give me any more tang if I don't burn you to death. Who is the arsonist was the only topic of discussion in the entire county. Even at Shuckers. Facebook groups popped up around the question. That's funny. One user suggested that people download an app that allowed them to listen to police scanners in real time. Ooh, that's real forward thinking. That's only yeah. been around for 40 years. You fucking numb nut. But how would that help if you just hear what they... No, keep, they just to drink yeah. beer so and listen to, to it. Yeah. Just See, listen there they to go it. again. Yeah. Let's yeah. head out to the fire. Yeah. The app included a feature, a top 10 list of where it was being used. By the end of 2012, L.A. and New York were ranked two and three 
following Acomec County at number one. Acomec. Oh, wow. Acomec's finally number one in something. Bruh, bruh, bruh. Acomec County, what's up, bro? <laughs> Acomec in the middle of the show of the 90s. The national news media showed up, excited at the combination of a serial arsonist and a typical American rural setting. Charlie Rose opened a segment on CBS this morning saying, someone is waging war on rural Virginia. And also, I'm not harassing any women. Oh, make it a topical. Charlie Their Rose fired from harassment. is fire. Oh. The battles continued. <laughs> the volunteer firefighters decided crashing at the station in sleeping bags was better than going home just to wake up again with a page. Later, Charlie would be fired himself. <laughs> There's so Sorry. many. There's so there's so right. There's so many right Sorry, there. I had to try to it's catch good, up with Tommy Gunslade. Let me get through these four paragraphs real quick. Let's see. They were the firefighters. <laughs> I don't know where. I don't know what oh, things are, man. Your thumb <clears throat> left the paper. That's how to make no no around here. The firefighters lady. were exhausted. Once they finished putting out a massive house fire, only to realize that the house on the other side of the street had also been burning the entire time. The roof. The roof. The roof is on fire also over there that as well. One, that roof is also on fire. Also that one too. Damn it. The roof. We, we need some more water so that motherfucking roof doesn't burn. We should turn around occasionally when we're fighting fires. Like it's really <laughs> out of control. I said this is a rule in firefighting. I'm not a firefighter. Turn but, around. But I went to the turn academy. Around. Turn around. And the first thing they tell Every you. Every time you see a fire, you got to turn around. Turn around. Every time you see someone lighting something on fire, just turn around. Christmas Eve, a garage blew up when the fire reached a propane tank inside. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Law enforcement was also stretched thin. The, big invest the last big investigation in town was a running series of graffiti disparaging a couple named Jay and Danielle. They should start a Kickstarter. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. They, 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 the they, last they... big case they had in this town was someone was putting up anti-Jay and Danielle graffiti all over town. Is that considered a hate crime? Um, I guess, it depends on how it's motivated. Jay and Day, is that like Jewish? and Jay and Danielle? Oh. Again, you're mixing it up. Jew, <laughs> did he say Jew and Danielle? <laughs> I hear Jewish things everywhere. Did he say Hebe? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hebe and Danielle? That's what I heard. <laughs> he spelled J-K-Y-K-E. <laughs> Even with help from the FBI, ATF, and every other acronym, Asked they the had nothing. They placed, they placed motion-activated wildlife cameras high in trees, pointed at potential targets. But all they got were clips of squirrels, birds, and one cat chasing a mouse. Did they sell them to the BBC so David Attenborough could narrate over them? They could have made their money back. They brought in criminal profilers who came up with gems like... You got an arson over here. He's probably from around here. Thanks. And look for someone talking about the fires a lot. Wow, mm. I'm so glad. Where do, who do we make the check out to? Clarice Starling level. Cost me $1,200 to find out that we should be looking for someone who burns things. The only useful tidbit was the observation that many of the targets were only partially damaged, meaning that this, despite the growing number of torched houses, this arsonist wasn't very good at arson. Oh, uh. so an amateur, you might say. Mm. They even brought in a geographic profiler who analyzed the patterns of time and location to try to narrow down the culprit's address. Of course. That's what I would think first you do. He came up with the intersection of Matthews Drive and Dennis Drive. Just five houses from the from home Shucks. of Tanya and Charlie. Oh, yeah. Mm. So close. The officers canvassed the neighborhood, conducting knock and talks up and down every street. Cock and knocks. Nothing. Cock and knocks. Cock and knocks. You ever knock on a door What's her last dick? name? Buttlocks? <laughs> no. What's her last name? Bundick. 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 Okay. Bundick's. Law enforcement continued to miss, which led to the rise of local vigilantes. Oh, fecht. Oh, shit. It started on Facebook groups oh, with dude. thousands of commenters playing armchair investigators. What is it with fucking towns Facebook. and fucking lynchings, dude? Yeah, Terrifying. Yeah. Accusations flew in every direction. One commenter ran a betting pool where people could predict the next fire. The priest did it. Oh, yeah. Well, there's a little economy springing up around. That's supposed to happen. Others, I got five on the janitor. No, they're writing on which house, which abandoned house will burn down next. Oh, that's even funnier. Yeah. You know what they should do? Burn them themselves, and that way they won't have to R worry about rig, rig the game. That's called, exactly. rigging, that's called rigging the game. Yeah. Others made note of investigator sightings, repeatedly blowing undercover operations. <laughs> <laughs> they, what do you do right there, undercover officers? Are you a shut detective? Up, up. Why are you wearing glasses and a fake mustache? Hey, can we get a selfie real quick so I can show I actually met a detective? Hey, get the fuck out of here. I'm trying to stake out this fucking house right now. Another commenter wrote, quote, Seems to me some of the properties being burned are people who are taking advantage of the arson of an arson being on the loose. So they are burning their own properties. Mmm, just a thought. Oh. The commenter was Tanya Bundick. 
Oh, interesting. <laughs> what a dumb fucking comment. When the reward for information she can't jumped. help it. She's like, it feels too. Yeah. She's into the like. She's, she gets. She's she's getting a little out of hand. She gets she's, hard. It's, she's getting full of herself. She gets a little clip boner when she does all these weird things. She gets the leg up on people. You know, yeah. she's excited. When the reward for information jumped from five thousand to twenty five thousand. Things start changing. I'm going to buy me a new Hyundai. <laughs> citizens started trying to catch the arsonists in earnest. Some formed watch groups, splitting up the cover areas of town, planning to divide the money if they succeeded. <laughs> so we all get $300, okay? How big is this group, Irina? Jesus. A man named $25, Matt Hart <gasps> started an official group named the Eastern Shore Arsonist Hunters. They had jackets Who wore made? custom printed t-shirts out on the I was just joking. I was just joking. They made shirts with flames on them and shit. <laughs> What's <laughs> our theme code? I don't know, turquoise and yellow. Like the San Jose Sharks? Yep. <laughs> Which they so also sold online for twenty two dollars each to raise money for the fire department. Can we still buy one? I don't know. That'd be fucking. We should dope still shit. support this for their fire department. Tensions rose. Neighbor accused neighbor. Many accused Matt purely because he was so interested in the case. First they came for me, yeah. and I said nothing. And I said nothing. And then they came for wait no, it's first they came for somebody else. And, and I, I said nothing. nothing. Yeah. One investigator was, too late. was exploring a field <laughs> with a friend. <laughs> When he got a call from a citizen with a tip. Hi, I'm a citizen with a tip. Can I stick my tip in it? There was a new <laughs> fire, and the caller knew for sure who yeah. said it. Yeah, oh, and really? I'm not going to say my name. It's definitely not Tanya. Yeah, that's right. I'll be the at Chuck's, though, if you want to hang out. <laughs> the investigator listened and then sighed and then told the caller that the accusation had to be false because his suspect was the friend standing next to him in the field. So some guy calls and goes, hey, there's a fire happening right now, and I saw who did it. Cool, who did it? Jim. Jim's right Jim's next to me. Jim's right next to me. Yeah. In February 2013, J.D. Shreves left his house for 20 minutes to drop his kids off with their grandmother. When he came back, he smelled smoke. Luckily, he found the source, a lit rag stuffed into the paneling of his house. This 44th fire Fuck. was Damn. different. Not only was this the first truly occupied target, but the arsonist had clearly staked out the home waiting for him to leave. Oh, and didn't think he would come back. The date was February 14th. Valentine's oh, Day. Valentine's. So she's got her cuck. Like, she's like, ooh, you know what I want to do for date night? Yeah. Let's step it up a notch. And he's like, all right, honey, what do you want to do? I'll bring the gasoline and the rags. <laughs> God damn it. No, I want there to be a man inside when we do it. Inside the house or you? Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. I'm just trying to be a good cuck. Six weeks later, state troopers Burke and Johnson sat in a camouflage tent. You are a good cook. You voted for Bernie. I'm sorry. <laughs> huddled around a tiny space heater 50 yards from one of the likely targets. So they're like hiding like camouflage though? Yeah, that's what, they, they, that's what they've been. They've setting up like little hunting like duck blinds basically. But also they all get their clothes at Tanya's place. <laughs> so it's all a little shrugging. They get out of the, they like, get out yeah. the camouflage tent. Yeah. And it's, like, it's just a blue sequin top. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. and heels and stuff. Man, <laughs> man, they're Burke. It's kind of difficult to, to chase these perps and these heels. But I'll tell you what, my calves look great. I like supporting the local uh, businesses, you know? Uh, at 11.45 p.m., a van pulled up. Someone jumped out and ran to the tiny shack as the van pulled away. With night vision goggles, Johnson watched the man stuff some cloth in the door jam oh. light it on, and light it on fire. Whoa. They jumped to their feet and sprinted towards him, yelling, Stop! Police! He ran to the road and jumped in the van just as it reappeared. The officers had been dropped off and had no car. <laughs> of course. Hey, Mom, uh, I'm going to need you to come pick me up. God damn it, when are you going to stop being a volunteer police? <laughs> but they called it in, and soon every car in the area moved and cornered the firebugs. They were shocked to discover Charlie and Tanya. <gasps> Oh, so they they got what? him, right? They, they got him. Oh, they got what? him. What? Ladies and gentlemen, we got they him. They got him. It was Charlie and Tanya this whole time? Were they fucking? Did they catch him fucking? <laughs> yes, they caught him while driving whilst fucking. Yeah. Do you guys remember that movie where they would do car crashes and fuck? Crash? It's called Crash. Yeah, I didn't yeah. actually it see great. it, but it was, I heard about yeah, it. Yeah, so it was great. One I, officer asked, do you have any weapons? Tanya replied. This dick. This, or I, uh, <laughs> I beat you I said this tool of a husband, but yeah. <laughs> ah, that's better. No, that's way better. Tanya replied, there's a chapstick in my bra. Okay. The date was April 1st. This is it Fool's April Fool's? They got arrested on April Fool's Day. Oh, I thought the joke was she didn't have chaps. Yeah, He's the, like, the, there's well, no chaps again. Like, April you feel my Fool's nipple? Day. Like, you just touched my boobs. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Me too. Hashtag me too. 
Charlie and Tanya were arrested and taken to different police stations. Well, you got for interrogation. That. You got to interrogate. Oh, it's them a Bonnie and Clyde situation. They barely had to ask Charlie a thing. He readily admitted to most of the fires. He's like, "Thank God you guys are here. I need you to help me get away from my girlfriend. She's fucking nuts. She keeps wife. Like, oh, they're already married. Yeah. But when asked about, no, they're not married yet. Oh, sorry. But when asked about certain After buildings, you corrected me, you evil asshole. Motherfucker. <laughs> Motherfucker. Motherfucker. When asked on certain buildings, his only reply was no comment. <gasps> they went through all sixty-six fires. Sometimes Charlie would claim responsibility, explaining exactly how he did it. 66 fires? This guy's mm-hmm. going away for a while. On the others, he reverted to no comment. They asked him, was there any that you liked better? He shook his head. I hated every night. So this is like Michael Scott when he's like, when he's fucking, when Jane's like, uh, what is it, Jane? What's his name? His girlfriend. He's like, uh-huh. and they're like, is she mean to you? He's like, well, it's all right. She's kind of. <laughs> so he, he was forced by her. She forced him. In yeah. the other jail, Tanya sung a very different tune. <gasps> he made me do it. She had no idea about the fires <laughs> on this particular mm-hmm. evening. Anyone named Tanya is immediately guilty mm-hmm. of everything you accuse her of, right? Witchcraft, burn her at the stake. She's guilty. Tanya. Set, let, set, her, set her on fire. Set her on fire. <laughs> on this particular evening, she and Charlie had been driving around when he suddenly asked her to stop and let him out. A few minutes later, he got back in the car. She had no idea why. Oh, Tanya, you've been wronged. She added that he'd been start, he'd been working late starting a few months ago, leaving the house at all hours of the night. Tanya's a smart woman. As Charlie's interrogation continued, he eventually admitted that Tanya set all of the no comment fires, uh, <laughs> including the first eleven or twelve. And wait, and oh, okay, so she didn't do all of them. Eventually, he took over because he was worried about her. Oh, that is he love. Cares about her. That is very sweet. I can never find anyone to do I've that. I've never for had me. anyone set a fire for me. But he told the officers he was ready to go to court and take the rap all on his own. Oh, what a romantic! Why that. they asked? Because I love her. I really fell in love with this girl. He explained, telling them that before Tanya, he was never happy. Oh, men are so stupid. <laughs> then he continued, quote, "And the moment I fell in love with her, my dick stopped working." Oh, I thought he was going to say she lit my heart on fire or something like that. Yeah, that was a lot more romantic answer than I'm impotent. <laughs> what, what he said the moment he fell in love with her, his dick stopped working. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, I think, what? What's going on with this guy's wiring? <laughs> oh no, I get it. I get it. That's why dudes fuck anonymous women. I get it. I get it. It's not you don't want to fuck something you respect. I get it. Doctors really? couldn't help. They said it was all in his head. Neither could therapists nor his priests. The fires were the only thing that made Tanya happy. The night of the first fire was the first time they had sex in 18 months. Wait, but then his dick works. When they started setting well, fires. Fire. Okay, so the, he gets turned on by the fires too, apparently. No, then. he gets turned on by her being pleased with oh. him. He's being a good boy. He gets pat oh, on the head I like, see. good job. And then, like then that's why Jim Morrison wrote that song. Come on, baby, light that fire. <laughs> My It'll dick make... is not working. Anymore. They don't have a benefit. There's that's no right. Viagra yet. <laughs> Try to set one of those 65 buildings on fire. fire. I can't. I can't take any more Rhino 32 because my heart will explode. <laughs> Is that a gas station vi- vi- yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Rhino 32. How many rhinos? That's what they're doing. So what Rhino does, the, the, the Rhino 30, Rhino puts out all these like gas station boner pills. Yeah. And they keep getting the FDA keeps going like, nope, not that one. So and they they'll change put it? Out, like just, Rhino 12. They just change the number yeah. and add like, oh, well, here's some oregano. And now yeah. it's Rhino 12. Are they safe oregano. or are they dangerous? Um, certain people that we know say they're totally safe. Uh, I know and those, those people, people too. are Playing Russian roulette with their heart and their dick at and once. And their dick. That's what's up, dude. There's chemicals in it that it's hurt, fucking with your heart. I mean, it, and your so yeah, it, it fucks it, with your heart, man. There's like low levels of the we same chemical. This is a public as, service announcement yeah. to our listeners. Yeah, don't ladies, take anything. Don't let your men take, take it. Take rhino pills. Men, don't let your ladies take it. Uh, all genders, don't take it. But uh, if you want to sexes, snort it, do it. Uh, that, now that's things. That's not what we're trying to leave a message on. Oh, okay. <laughs> if you want to inject it, do it. Okay, this is the worst anti-drug commercial you've ever done, and I've ever been a part of. Now some things began to fall into place. J.D. Shreves was Tanya's ex. Who? The guy whose house they lit on fire when he was dropping his kids off with their grandmother. Oh, okay. She wanted that fire as revenge for their shitty breakup. Mm. The only other occupied house belonged to a guy who once hit on her on Facebook, which she found disrespectful. Wait, what? I thought she dresses like a skank so that dude's hit on her. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that sometimes she's not going to be like picking and choosing. And be like, um, oh. I dress like a skank for the other 15 women in town. Oh, Not okay. for the men. Oh, I'm sorry, my lady. My apologies. Wow, you Char- are so sincere. Charlie had one more crime to admit. He and Tanya... The crime of love. <laughs> yeah. He and Tanya had been the ones who put up all the anti-Jay and Danielle graffiti. 
Oh, really? Because the couple had said that Charlie and Tanya were a bad match. Who's Jay and Danielle? Remember that the old, the biggest crime they had before all this fires oh, that's right, was a graffiti okay. spree disparaging right. one couple. And the, this is a couple yeah. we didn't really hear about the couple early in the right. story. But what if it's a couple right. who went to their house for dinner and they just didn't like that they were more in love than Tanya and Charlie? These motherfuckers. I was thinking like they brought the wrong thing, like Antamins. <laughs> I'm a hostess family over here, and these people are doing Antamins. <laughs> oh, they're gonna pay, honey. I'm gonna get hard by setting fires. As the interrogation drew to a close. Charlie asked to smoke a cigarette. And then he burnt the place down. The officers said, okay. Why would you give an arsonist a cigarette? That's but, what they, That's another thing they teach you in arson school. Never give arson cigarettes. Hey, officer. Yes? Can I have a cigarette? Young man, you cannot have a cigarette. You're an arson. Now, now, I, hold, now hold on there, Johnson. This is, this is a fair police station. Do you want, you want a cigarette? Would you also like some tinder, some kindling, a bunch of Kleenex, and uh, maybe some silk. Yeah, and I swear to Pinky Promise, I won't do it. Okay, well, you know what? You can have your cigarette and, yeah, go get Johnson, her. go get her the gasoline. All right. This small town is great. Here you go. What are you going to do with it? I don't think people in Virginia have that accent, but I'm going to keep doing the it. The officers said okay to the cigarette and called for an ashtray and a lighter, which proved unnecessary uh, as Charlie still had a lighter in his pocket. They didn't check him? Oh, is, these are volunteers. Sake. Oh, I'm sorry. That's you right. go Everyone easier. in the town's a volunteer. They're, even the people that live there, they volunteer <laughs> to volunt- live there. You must go easy on these people. They've had it very hard. <laughs> that fall, Charlie Smith pled guilty to 67 counts of arson. Wait, Jeez. so they gave him a cigarette? He didn't He didn't set anything on fire? No, he just smoked a cigarette. Oh, oh. I thought that was Are you going to psych me out right now? No, no, no. He, no he was actually, so here's the thing. is He was really, like, when they interviewed him, he was going like, man, I'm so embarrassed. Like, I feel really shitty about all this. Like, you know, I respect you guys. I'm sorry. Let me just tell you everything. Like he he was he, he completely cooperated 100 percent when it all got when it all got going. Oh, that's great. Like there was no there was no douchebaggery coming from him. Man, if he didn't initially do all these awful things, you'd be like. But what he a wasn't good guy. like, here, give me the cigarette. What's this? You guys suck at your job. He wasn't like that because that's no. He was like, and they're like, let's get a, let's get him a lighter. He's like, oh no, man, I already have a lighter. And they're like, what? Okay. It was this he, actually, that, he actually pulled a piece of burning tinder out. This out sounds like season three of True Detective. That fall, Charlie Smith pled guilty to 67 counts of arson and one count of conspiracy to commit arson. Too bad it wasn't 69 counts of arson. (laughs) He was sentenced to 15 years in prison. Fuck. At first, Tanya was only charged with one count of conspiracy and just one count of arson. And one count of being super fucking fly. And bossy. She had no idea how serious her situation was until December of 2013, when the district attorney added another 62 counts. 62? Wait, mm-hmm. so he said that she did it too? Per- oh, shit. Where Charlie's trial went on quickly on account of his plea, Tanya's trial was a complete spectacle. Of course. Especially because the star witness for the prosecution was Charlie, Charlie Smith. Charlie Smith. <laughs> the defense tried to paint his testimony. The defense. The de- defense. You the de- always say it like that. Defense. Because I like sports like a good American man. I like sports, too. I told you I watched the fucking Olympics figure skating. You asshole. I love yeah. sports. That's def- my favorite sport. It's beautiful. What Curling is mine. Curling is the best winter Olympic sport. Ugh, those men are so Have you shape. seen that Canadian guy, that Canadian husband? It was a, like his wife had a 9 a.m. match. Of course. And he was, he was double fisting his third and fourth beers. Of course I saw. That's it. insane. Yeah. I, it's I'll marry him right now. they made a sport out of like ice sweeping. But go on with your story. <laughs> uh... The defense tried to paint his testimony as that of an obsessed lover who couldn't handle it if she met someone else while he was in prison. Oh, that's very sweet. Tanya took the stand to give her version of events on the night of their arrest. According to her, they had gone to Walmart to get her sons of some smartphones as birthday gifts. But then she and Charlie got into a fight over whether they could afford to buy a package of steakums. What's, What's a steakum? Like steak, but ums? It's like microwave steak bites. Ugh. Oh, no, they're for dogs, like little gross. steakums. Dogs eat those. Oh, they got in a fight over food for the pets? That's when the... No, it was... There, it's, your no, relationship's going to shit if you get in a fight over food for your pets. Then they went to a second Walmart and got into another fight while she shopped for underwear. Oh, she's buying her lingerie at Walmart. She's like, what do you care? You can't even get hard. He's like, where? <laughs> I Set want- this Walmart on fire. Yeah. Then they got into another fight in the this car. This Walmart's on fire. He got out, got back in, and suddenly they were surrounded by cops. They have such a fucking or- annoying relationship. It was clear that the jury was not buying her bullshit. Yeah, it's a real bad story. She should have called someone else to get a better story. So on January 14th, 2014, Tanya's lawyers announced that she wanted to change her plea. The court Insanity. re-read the charges... And on the first count, she pled guilty. Oh. She was sentenced to 10 and a half years in prison. 
she faced separate trials for every single arson. Whoa. How so, do they have the fucking money for so that? So to avoid getting the hammer dropped on her head, Tanya entered what's called an Alfred plea for the remaining 61 counts. What's that mean? Allowing her to not admit guilt, but acknowledge that the state had enough evidence for a conviction. Oh, interesting. Okay. I didn't know that was an option. Okay. Listen, I'm not going to say I did it, but I'm not going to say I didn't do it. Yeah. I'm not going to say I did it, but you can totally prove that I did. So I didn't, but good job on you. And the judge's like, what? Her, in the end, her total seven, sentence was 17 and a half years. And she only did, what, two months of it? No, she's still in jail They're right both now. still in jail right now. Oh, shit. This, I, gu- this went, I guessed. This, was all, I was right. this all happened end of 2013, beginning of 2014. What happened to recently. the kids? They're uh, actually they're outside this door. They're going to come on in, kids. It's a Jerry Springer kind of thing. Mommy, Over the course- <laughs> No, no, no. We're not them. They're fire starters. Aww. We are podcasters. You're welcome to live with us. Actually, not me. Just Irina. Hey, uh, just don't <laughs> listen to this episode in particular because you might not like what we said about Mommy. Over the course of the investigation, Virginia State Police officers logged 26,378 work hours and another 14,924 in overtime. So they were helping the city, the town. Yeah, they, addition, gave, they gave them jobs. Yeah. They, they made spent, them feel useful. In addition, they spent about 113,000 on lodging, 67,000 on food, 87,000 on fuel, and 38,000 on aviation. And how many years of this investigation? About a year, uh, about five months. How many people wow. worked on this? That there was a hundred thousand dollars on town. lodging. You told the, you heard the whole town. Well, I mean, eventually they of had they called the FBI, the, C, the the ATF, like all those different acronyms. Oh. The CPS, oh, yeah. the KRQ. Yeah. ATFs, like I want a suite, yeah, extra rooms. The LGBTs, they called it everyone. one. Now guess. the big. I, I'm, now I'm gonna to, to close the story. I'm give you the biggest tragedy of the entire story. Shuckers is now closed. Oh, <laughs> boo. It's the fucking funniest way to end the show. I'm so proud of you for that. <laughs> the saddest part of the story, Shuckers is gone. Oh, shucks. <laughs> that was a great way to send that off. Oh. Today's sources include American Fire, Love, Arson, and Life in the Vanishing Land by Monica Hess, which, by the way, is fantastic. I really enjoyed reading it? this one. It's, it's the a book. book. It's the book about the story. She did the initial investigative reporting and then wrote the book. So you read again, a whole book? Yeah, I do it every week. Oh, fuck. American Fire, Love, Arson, and Life in a Vanishing Land by Monica Hess. And there's a bunch of stuff, a bunch of cool backstory on the psychology of arson and also the methodology for tracking arsonists. So if you're into that kind of stuff, it covers a bunch of really cool, cool little things about yeah, that. Yeah, I am into coming. Uh, Sorry, w- Mom and Dad. Also, WTKR.com and various websites from the Virginia State Correctional System, which I used to find some, um, some of the information that was not in the story. And that's the story of, uh, of Charlie Smith and Tanya Bundick. Charlie Smith and Bundick. Charlie and Tanya. Irina, where can our listeners find you on the interwebs? Oh, okay. I'm on uh, Instagrams. Um, on the Instagrams, I'm under the only Skya because there's another bitch out there with that last name, but I'm she's the only comic? one. No. Oh, well, she's then you're a fine. Journalist, uh, prize winning journalist, and uh, Facebook. <laughs> fuck that hoe, yo. Yo, fuck that shit. This is a real Irina Sky. Uh, guys, uh, if you could just click on your uh, app there on like uh, iTunes or whatever, share a button, send it to a friend that you like and whatnot. We're getting fucking awesome, awesome reviews. We got a new one from uh, uh, two Charlie underscore. Dope. Oh, it's two it means Tuesday. Sorry, Charlie underscore. Uh, what dialect am I reading this in? Uh, let's go with Russian since we oh, have. You a had Russian me do today. Russian before. Oh, please do it again. Not on this one. No, I don't do Ukrainian. I don't Ooh, do yeah. Russian well. I don't do, do Slovakian. Rus- yeah, those ones aren't fun. Oh, Moldovian. We just yeah, talked so about. Yeah, oh, yeah, Moldovian. Yeah, do, do, do. I found them through White Wine True Crime, and in two days, I've listened to twelve episodes. All right, go Dutch. Work- go Dutch, like Dutch. pay for like half of this, and you pay, pay for the other yeah. half, or no, do some sort of Scandinavian accent this time. I don't know Scandinavian, but I work the night shift, so podcasts are always way of life for me, and these two guys <laughs> single-handedly make my night great. They are the funniest and wittiest guys. Their, gre- their guests are also just as awesome. That goes to you. I okay, do it as Robert De Niro. Them. I absolutely love them, and this podcast... Keep up the amazing work, you two. You be Kaye, motherfucker. That was uh, Bruce, Willis. Bruce Willis. That's right. Who's back, by the way, in a new movie, apparently. I don't know what it's called. Guess it's who's called back. Guess got Die Hard, right? Guys, you can town. follow the show on all socials at CrimePod, C-R-I-I-I-M-E-P-O-D. You can also email the show to give us any sort of questions, uh, uh, at story ideas, dick pics, label those for Shevsky. That's mm, crimepodcast yes. at gmail.com with either one I or three. And of course, the, the freaking live show, 
March 17th, Saturday night. Tickets are still available. If you, uh, you can go to the Comic Store website, get those, uh, use the promo code Purple Shirt for half off. You can also email us directly for a super secret promo code if you want to, and uh, we, yes. can, we can hook you up. Those are going to be good. With that, with that stuff, bruh. Check so, out this bit from our new bonus oh, episode. And yeah, stick around uh, after after we close to uh, hear a little bit from our bonus episode. You can go support us on Patreon. We got some really cool, uh, really cool things coming up on Patreon for you guys. You want to so jump excited. involved? Yeah. If you are still listening right now and you haven't already, just fucking click to your next podcast. Can I just say this much? We want our, our Patreon users to, to actually email us and give us... Tell us what you want for, for the gifts, for oh, the prizes. Also, if you're still listening, uh, we're going to soon be doing the Crimeys because we've decided that's a great idea to have our end-of-the-year oh, award show. Yeah. So if you have any idea for either categories or nominations... So some of our favorite categories right now are best episode title, uh, weirdest opening of the show. Best way to say come. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. Yeah. What's your favorite come? That's always a good one. Uh, yeah. So we, the strangest, like your favorite criminal... Your favorite episode. Slate, you like gave that. enough fucking uh, examples. Just if you have any ideas. If you have ideas, that, just hit us up, bro. We're doing this for bro. you guys, and we want to make you happy. Let us know what kind of gifts and be, prizes be, you want on Patreon, dude, be, and let us know what you want. Be part of the family, dog. Let us know what you want for the crime. We're all criminals. We're gonna get tattoos together. I don't know if we're doing. I'm gonna that, get th- I'm gonna get three eyes tattooed over and over on my body for each kill. Every kill is a different three eyes. It seems weird that you three and I, is one, but you know whatever, bro. You and I are getting dick tattoos by the end of this fucking I podcast. I cannot wait. Right. Bye, robot. Can you like a tattoo? Well, that too, the law says that you cannot touch. But I think I see a lot of lawbreakers up in this house. Right? And I don't see a cop in sight. Okay. If I want barbecue, like, I mean Texas barbecue. I don't mean, like, let's get Kansas Kansas barbecue. Get the fuck out of here with your dry rubs in, in Missouri or whatever the fuck you guys are doing out there. Oh, wow. You are, you are like a... Yeah, like a f- sports team fan, like foaming at the mouth right now. Yeah, I will defend my barbecue place with my life. If you're talking, I'll take a bullet for pastrami. Call back, motherfucker. If you See say you it's would. barbecue and there's chicken involved, go fuck your whole family, dude. That's not barbecue <laughs> and there's chicken. Barbecue means that there's it's red meat, yeah. it's beef, there's fat dripping through it. I want extra moist fucking brisket. I want that yeah, shit. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree Ugh. with the brisket part. Uh, I also get, can get enjoy your, chicken. Get your fucking pussy ass bird. Out of my barbecue conversation, Mrs. Slayton, she'll go with In the England, barbecue. You just called some guy's girlfriend a wuss. Yeah, yeah. And told him to get I can, her out of the way because I can whoop her ass. <laughs> Your like, your 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 English girlfriend ain't got shit on this me. This is dude. your modern day. Andy I know Kaufman Muay Thai. Thing. I know Muay Thai. Oh, dude. I know very I Thai fr- myself. I will front kick your English girlfriend in the face real fast. Okay. She wants to come in, and try to get inside on me. Fine, get past get past that left leg. You get inside. Guess what? I've got ten years of white belt jujitsu <laughs> under uh, 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 in this. Sounds body. like you got ten years of white aggression. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm ready to go. You can't, you can't step to me with your bullshit English girlfriend and think that she's going to take me down. Slayton, somebody take throw a piece down? of bar- a barbecue in this guy's mouth. <laughs> and squirt barbecue <laughs> in your face to calm you down. That's your pepper spray. <laughs> oh, hey, guys. This was... Hi, is everyone feeling pleasant? This is the most brutal barbecue love I've ever seen. I've, Dude, I, it's so good. I mean, and this thing, Rudy's is great, and it's not even the good barbecue. That's awesome. That's how I feel about Mexican food in San Diego. When Like, if you can go to a certain place, they're like, that place is amazing, and it kicks every place in L.A.'s ass. But it's not even the best. Mexican food is the shit, dude. Mexican food's all, I've had a lot of it over the past few days. Mexicans made the best food I thought you were on the planet. Sh- I thought you were calling out to all Mexicans. You're all Mexicans. Listen up. We got to talk. All yeah. right, go yeah. on. Dear Mexicans. Oh, no. that's a good name. For, uh, uh, dear Mexicans, you've made the film <laughs> starring a black person. Ooh, we're going to Sundance. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, we haven't written it yet, but it is called Dear Mexicans. It's starring a black woman, mm-hmm. and she's a lesbian. She is deaf. She's Jewish. And she's transgender, so you can't even say she. It's going straight to Sundance. They already bought it. We just don't know how to write it yet without offending anyone. 